mushroom and soup. They add flavor. So, come on in. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. It's 6 o'clock. I want to welcome you to the Healing Power of Plant Foods cooking class. I'm April Ashcroft, and I'm super excited to have you here tonight, and I want to welcome those who are at home, viewing at home. Hopefully, you can come and join us sometime. Um, we are... We are in the midst of, you know, uh, being a little bit afraid of viruses and it's getting into the fall where we tend to get more sicknesses and I, I have something to tell you and that is that the more, the better you feed your body, the better, the stronger your immune system is going to be. In fact, that's the number one most important thing that you can do to build your immune system is to eat lots of plants. The more plants, the better, especially vegetables. Mom and grandma were right. Eat your vegetables because they will build your immune system and help you to be healthy. So, and also at the same time, they'll decrease, decrease your risk of all diseases. It may not completely eliminate diseases if you have them. It can help to reverse them as well. It won't completely eliminate them, eliminate them maybe. There may be some that are hard to do. You might have to tweak things a little bit, but it always makes things better. More plant foods make everything better. <laughs> so, and that's why I'm here tonight. I'm here to show you how to, in, how to incorporate them into your diet. And um, I, just a little bit about myself. I grew up eating a standard American diet and I watched my family members get the standard American diseases. I've seen a lot of, both my parents died of cancer, um, heart disease, uh, diabetes, strokes, kidney failure, and kind of the whole gamut, except for autoimmune. We don't have any autoimmune in my family, but I know that's dietary related as well. And as I was growing up and, and noticing this in my family and watching them go into hospitals and going in to see my dad when he had a tube down his throat and his chest cut open, um, I decided, well, long before that, I decided that I wanted to do something different because I knew this wasn't my genetic destiny, which many will tell you that um, you know, if your parents and grandparents had heart disease, you're going to get heart disease. And I did not believe that. And at first I thought it was going to be exercise. I got very heavily into exercise and I thought this is my ticket to a, a healthy life. And then as my health started to uh, deteriorate a little bit, I mean, it was only in my 20s and I didn't feel good at all. My energy level was really low and I was battling my weight and I just didn't feel good and I thought I am too young to feel like this and so I started playing with my diet and started reading some books and stumbled on a few things that promoted a whole food plant based diet decided to make the change pretty much overnight and I was eating a very healthy standard American diet come on in <laughs> welcome you're fine um, I was eating a very healthy standard American diet I was eating low fat ch a low fat dairy and I was eating um, skinless chicken and fish and whole wheat bread and I've grown up on beans and nuts and seeds I wasn't afraid of although I was not eating very many of those because I was very concerned about my weight so I pretty much stayed away from any fats and um, I just did not feel good so I like I said I switched immediately to whole food plant-based diet and my whole world changed within a week I felt so much better and just as time has gone on I've felt better and I've tweaked things a little bit over time and the, the more, the better I eat, the better I feel. And now at 54, I feel super energetic and so much energy, I can hardly stand it sometimes. <laughs> I just wanna go run. So it is really a great, a, a great thing to do, is to do a more whole food plant-based. And I, I don't really push or promote really vegan, vegetarian, anything like that. I just tell people, get as many fruits and vegetables into your diet as you can. It's all about abundance. It's not about getting rid of things although it's good to get rid of some things, um, it's all about including. What am I gonna include today? I, I encourage people, you know, every week, try to include one more plant food into your meal. In fact, studies show, you know, we talk a lot about building your microbiome, your gut bacteria, taking probiotics and all this stuff. The best probiotics are in plants. They are in fiber. Fiber is how you feed your gut. And that's a nutrient that is way lacking in the American diet. So anyway, let's get on with the food. <laughs> I could go on about that all night, but we're here to make some food. So, and we've got a fall menu tonight. We've got autumn stew and a triple treat cabbage salad and pumpkin ice cream. We're still, 
we're still summer around here. You know, it's going to be 91 tomorrow. So I thought we're okay to do ice cream this time of year. You can do ice cream any time of the year, right? <laughs> I'm all about ice cream. So um, anyway, okay, let's, we're going to go ahead and get our soup started. And let's see, I bet I didn't turn on my propane. Hold on one second here. So I've got a nice good sized soup pot here, which you're going to need. And we're going to start off with some onion, the basic soup starting ingredients. And this is just a yellow onion. You can use any kind of onion you want. Actually, the red, red onions are higher in antioxidants. And antioxidants are anti-aging compounds. I talk a lot about antioxidants. They are super high in most the very colorful plant foods. Antioxidants are anti-aging. And that's what they do is they protect you from aging. You know, we've been looking for the fountain of youth. Well, it's right here in front of you. Fruits and vegetables. Um, but again, your, your red onions are going to be your highest antioxidant onion. And I do use those. I like to use them raw, actually. Um, but this is just a yellow, just a yellow onion. And I'm going to chop it with my Vidalia Chop Wizard. You can get these at Bed Bath & Beyond and probably Target. You can get them on Amazon. Great little tool. Best thing ever. I'll be using it. Um, actually, this is the only thing I'll be using it. I'll use it on the mushrooms. Anyway, no more, te no more tears when you're chopping an onion. And those tears come from organosulfur compounds. I want you to remember that. Organosulfur compounds. Those are powerful anti-cancer compounds. And they are not activated until you chop your onion. And we feel that when we chop them, right? So what you want to do is if you're eating raw onion, you want to chew, chew, chew. The more you chew it, the more you're breaking open those cell walls of the plant and you're making those organosulfur compounds more bioavailable. Your body absorbs them better. Powerful anti-cancer compounds. Um, studies show that, he, that onions decrease risk of cancers of all types. And if you're, if you're familiar with October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, I call it Breast Cancer Prevention Month. Let's not, let's not cure it, let's prevent it so we don't have to cure it. And if we're eating onions, it greatly decreases our risk of getting breast cancer. And breast cancer and prostate cancer are very similar. They're both hormonal type cancers, hormonal, hormonal driven cancers. So I'm just gonna add that onion to my soup pot. And I don't have anything in the bottom of this pot. No, no, no broth, no oil. I don't use oil ever. Oil is a very high fat food, high calorie food. Very high in calorie, very low, low, low in nutrients. Go home and look at your olive oil bo bottle and look and see the nutrient profile and there's not a whole lot in it. They've thrown those nutrients away. The nutrients were in the, oh my goodness, that onion is strong. <laughs> They've thrown the nutrients away. The nutrients were in the fiber. Like a black olive, those are super high in antioxidants and other nutrients. And when you pull the oil out, you're getting 100% fat, 100% oil. And that oil actually coats the inner lining of your arteries and shuts off or, or in, in, uh, impairs your endothelial cells. Your arteries are coated with endothelial cells, which produce a gas called nit nitric oxide. That nitric oxide keeps your blood vessels flexible and like Teflon. So blood just runs through your arteries very, very easily. When you put olive oil into your body, you're greatly reducing that, um, that nitric oxide production by like 40% within four hours. And you slow your blood flow. We don't want to slow our blood flow. We want to keep it, keep it going good. And I've got this on. This is a pretty decent pan, so it's, of course, helpful to have a good stainless steel pan. And if you do need to add something, you can add a little bit of water. But I'm just going to kind of continue stirring this. And if you're kind of looking at me going, wait a minute, olive oil's good for me, coconut oil's good for me. I think you guys most, have you guys all been here? Everybody here tonight? We know your position. You know my position. Well, people at home may not. <laughs> so if you don't believe me, and I don't expect you to believe me, I tell people, go home, 
and do your own research. I've got four link or four people listed on your recipe sheet. Dr. Joel Furman, Michael Greger, Brenda Davis, and Caldwell Esselstein. And Caldwell Esselstein is the director of preventive cardiology at the Cleveland Clinic. And he has a 98% success rate with his patients who he is uh, reversing heart disease. They come to him with plugged arteries and he gets them all cleared out, rotor, rotor rooted out with no rotor rooter. <laughs> He uses a plant, whole food plant-based diet, no oil. He tells, he tells his patient, absolutely no oil, no coconut oil, no olive oil, no safflower oil, no canola oil, no motor oil, no oil. It's all the same. It all does the same damage, all increases your risk of heart disease. Now, with that said, if, you, if your numbers are good, if you have no problem with heart disease, no family history, you're athletic and run, and, you know, and stay active and um, are a good weight, you might be able to stand a little bit. He would shoot me for saying that, but um, I think you could probably get away with a little bit. But you know, if a little bit can be hurtful, you know, why why use it? I when I first heard him lecture, and it was my husband and I, and I made my husband come with me because his cholesterol after being married for 10 years was still like 270, 260, and he'd been eating a like 90% whole food plant-based diet. Except I was using olive oil and veginase, mayonnaise, and earth balance buttery spread, and all those wonderful plant-based um, substitutes, and his cholesterol was still high. Well, after hearing Dr. Esselstein speak at this conference, my husband says, let's give it a shot, just see, see how it goes. He didn't believe it. And uh, sure enough, in, in six weeks, dropped his cholesterol 50 points, so just by getting rid of the oil. And at first, it was a little bit, it was a little bit, um, you know, it was a little tricky. I felt like I was kind of starting over because I was so used to using oil. But after I got used to it, no big deal. Okay, it's starting to stick a little bit. I don't know if you can see the inside of this pan. Is there a camera guy want to show the inside of the pan and how it's not sticking? Maybe. <laughs> oh, maybe they can see it there. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit of water. Now you can add broth if you want. I find water is much cheaper than broth unless you make it yourself. And I do occasionally make my own broth. But um, the broth you buy at the store, it seems like most of the flavor is in the sodium that's in them. And I just soon just use water, uh, the flavor from the soup, the flavor from that browning. I don't know if you could see that the, there, it starts to brown on the bottom. That's releasing some of the sugars in the onion and that adds some flavor too as well. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and chop some garlic and garlic is another one of those allium family vegetables. Same as onion, uh, leeks, scallions, shallots. They're all allium family and they all have those organosulfur compounds. Garlic's even more powerful when it comes to cancer though. Use them all, use a good variety of onions, garlic, And if you can, I've heard them say that if you can let your garlic um, sit for 10 minutes after you chop it, it, it develops those compounds. It changes them to be more powerful anti-cancer. But I often, you know, I'm cooking dinner and I got my garlic ready and I don't want to wait 10 minutes. So I often forget about that. It's probably something you could chop first and let it sit as you're doing everything else and then add it. But we'll go ahead and add that garlic right in there. That is hot. I forget about that. Okay, and then the, another very important thing that we I like to add to my cooked, when I'm cooking onion, I'm always sauteing some onion as well. Speaking of breast cancer awareness month and prostate cancer awareness, um, one but studies show that one button mushroom has decreased risk of breast cancer by 64%. One button mushroom a day. It was a study out of China. Women who ate that ate that much. And that's just one white button mushroom. And so I encourage people to get mushrooms in. They have aromatase inhibitors, which keeps estrogen levels low in your body. You want to keep your estrogen levels low. They have compounds that destroy cell, destroy damaged cells and remove them from your body. 
They're anti-angiogenic, which means a, a, a tumor, a cancer tumor, needs a blood supply to feed it so that it will grow. Mushrooms cut off that blood supply. And we're just going to do about a, about a couple cups of chopped mushrooms. And the great thing about this chopper is it's got a little measuring cup on the side that you can see the, see the measuring. Then we're going to just add a little bit more water. We'll add another cup or two. We'll get those veggies swimming in that water. Uh, mushrooms, one, another great thing about mushrooms is it, they are a great probiotic as well. They, they grow a really great gut garden is what I've heard it referred to, increasing that, the bacteria. They also have 22 proteins that lower cholesterol and blood pressure at the same time. There's no medicine that will do that, that will lower both of those at the same time. And the mushrooms are much, much healthier. Okay, we're going to add another very important vegetable, and that's leafy greens. And this is kale. If you were here last month, I used the curly leaf kale in my Mediterranean kale salad. Tonight, I'm using the lacinato kale. This is more of a flat leaf kale. It's a little bit easier to work with because it's flat, and you can chop it a little bit easier. I actually like the curly leaf a little bit better, but I'm just going to use this for something different. And I'm just going to keep those stems right on there. When I'm doing like a chunky soup or some kind of a chunky meal, I like to leave the the stems on because it just adds more chunk. You don't even know the stems are in there. And I feel like the, the stem is like the bloodline to the plant. I think there's some good nutrients in there. If I'm not using it, like in a salad where I don't want that, the hearty, you know, that, that thick stem, I will just set them off to the side and I'll kind of chomp on, on them while I'm, while I'm cooking because they, they taste pretty good actually. I don't want to waste any of that. And of course, you can turn them into a broth as well. What market do you shop at to get that kale? This came from Natural Grocer. I also shop at Smith's. They have some pretty nice produce, organic produce. Harmon's has really nice produce too. They, uh, they are a bit high, and I used to go, I've shopped at Harmon's for years, but they, I've just realized that Smith's is a lot less expensive on a lot of things, including kale. <laughs> and so I've been going there. It's only another half a mile out of my way, or quarter mile. And the same with the onion with the kale and cruciferous vegetables. By the way, cruciferous vegetables include broccoli and collards and, did you need me? I'm sorry, would you mind just telling people online where they can get the recipes from? Oh yes, thank you, thank you. I was just reminded, people that are watching from home, if you email me at healthforlifecooking at gmail.com, um, the four is a number four, so healthforlifecooking at gmail.com, I will send you the recipes, so. Thank you for reminding me that. Um, OK, so cruciferous vegetables are kale, collards, bok choy, arugula, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, all of those allium, or not allium, all of those, um, those types, those cabbage-y type vegetables. And I'm just going to throw those right into the pot. Uh, studies show that women who get one cup of cruciferous vegetables a day cut the risk of breast cancer in half. Uh, three servings a week for men decrease risk by 34%. So if you were to eat it every day, of course, you'd get double that. So I'm just going to stir that right into there. Now, if you'll notice, this is a soup, but I don't have very much water in here. And that's because I want the, the cooking time to be quick. If I had this full of of water or four cups of water it would take it much longer to cook and I want to cook it fairly fast so 
Green leafy vegetables are high in lutein, and people with the highest levels of lutein in their blood have the cleanest arteries with no atherosclerosis. They, lutein is also concentrated in the eyes to help with night vision. Um, decrease, uh, they decrease green leafy vegetables in general, decrease your risk of strokes, um, lower the risk of getting diabetes. They're super high in fiber, and we are really lacking in fiber, like I mentioned. They're high in folate, and folate, people that have low levels of folate have like a like a triple the, the risk of having severe depression. So there's a food relation to depression and anxiety and mental disorders as well. They're super anti-inflammatory. You know, if you've got some inflammation issues or autoimmune issues, green leafy vegetables are one of the best things. In fact, I, I will get headaches occasionally from food sensitivities. And if I get some raw greens in and just chew, chew, chew and get those nutrients out of them, I can actually, I can tell the reduction in the inflammation in my in my headaches. So um, you might want to try that for other inflammatory. In fact, all diseases have an inflammatory component. So just more greens, more, more, more greens. Okay, we're going to let that just cook a bit. I'll turn that down. Let's see. Uh, and we're going to move over to our ice cream because I want to get that, get that in the ice cream freezer so it will I might put just a little bit more water in there. Okay, over to our blender. And just a word about a blender. This is a, a really great blender to have if you want to do ice creams and things like that. It's a good high-powered blender. If you don't have a strong blender, you can still make this ice cream. I'm going to grab, it, I grab my contents out of the refrigerator. And this is how you do it. If you've, got, if you've got a good strong blender, you can just grab your nuts, grab your dates, throw them in there, throw some water, blend it up, and you're good for, for some ice cream. But if you, don't, if you have a blender that is not quite as strong, you can soak your, your nuts and your dates in, in the water before you blend, okay? So we're making this out of all whole foods. I use all whole food sweeteners, whole food fats, which are your nuts. And then, um, let's see, what else am I, we've got pumpkin in here. So anyway, this is a cup of dates. Uh, Diglett Nor Pitta Dates is the type of date that I'm using. And then I've got a half a cup of pecans and a half a cup of cashews. You can use either, you can use all pecans or all cashews. The one thing about pecans is they're darker, and so it'll make it a little bit darker. But we're put, putting some pumpkin in with it too. So. I don't know if it would, it would probably be just fine. I like to use the combination. It's good to get a combination of different nutrients anyway. And like I said, I've got this soaking in two cups of water and I've had it in the refrigerator since last night. So it's good and cold, which is what you want. Actually, you want this even when you've got a strong blender like this. If you're just throwing the ingredients in raw, unsoaked, you're gonna wanna add ice water when you blend it. Cause you want a cold cream before we put it in our ice cream freezer. But since I've got them soaked in the fridge, it's already cold, so we're good there. So I'm just going to dump that in the blender. And this is kind of the base of lots of different types of ice cream. I've done, for community education last month, I did uh, maple pecan. So I just used pecans, and I added a little bit of maple syrup. And I think that's it, actually. It was very good. And then after I've got this in here, I'm going to add a cup of canned pumpkin or home-cooked pumpkin, just a cup of pumpkin. People ask me about that, about doing my own pumpkin for pumpkin pies and things like that. And if I can find a canned or a, or a pre-cooked option that's very clean with nothing in it, I will go with that just to save on time. And pumpkin, it's just pumpkin. There's not even any salt in it. So, okay, and then we're gonna go with some seasonings. We've got, um, we'll go with a tablespoon of molasses first. Actually, I think I measured that, come to think of it, if I can get it all out of there. And then we've got some seasonings. I've got, Let's see, two teaspoons of cinnamon, three-fourths teaspoon of ginger, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Let's see if I can get that out of there. So we'll dump our seasonings in. I've already got that measured. 
And then we're going to go with a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm just going to kind of guess on that. And before I add my other w ice water, my other cup of ice water, I'm going to go ahead and blend it with just these ingredients. Because the less water you have, the better it's going to blend and get creamy. Okay, so we're going to want to add another cup or two of ice water. And it kind of depends on how thick you want it, how rich you want it. Of course, the more water you add, the more servings you're going to get out of it. But you want to, you know, keep that consistency nice. So I usually do a little bit more than the cup that's on, the, that's on your recipe. Okay, I think we're good. I'm just going to make sure we're good here. But I'm going to try a piece of kale. We want to make sure that kale is tender. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> that was silly. <laughs> I forget it's there because I can't see it. Okay, mmm, that kale, so good. Okay, this is ready to go in the freezer. And what I've got here is a Cuisinart ice cream freezer. I've got a frozen bowl in the freezer in there and you just always keep that in your freezer so it's ready to go when you want ice cream. Because it takes about 24 hours to freeze. To freeze solid. I mean it'll freeze but they, the instructions tell you to do it 24 hours ahead. So I'm just gonna grab that. And this is a quart size. You can get these on Amazon. Um, I, Costco has had them. In fact, they've had the, I think they've had the bigger size than this. There's like a quart and a half size too. So not, not real big. And you want to make sure you put everything on and put it together before and get it started before you add. I add my, my 
friend that helps me with my community education classes. She went home after my class last time and wanted to make ice cream. And she got everything, she poured it in, and then she started it. It freezes the second it hits that bowl. So you want to, I mean, it'll freeze and then your paddle won't spin. So you want to be sure and get it going. It's a little bit loud. And then you just pour in the ingredients. And then one of the reasons I don't put all the water in is so I can rinse out that blender jar and get the rest. Maybe not get it all, but get at least some of it. Then just let that sit for about 20 minutes and you'll have ice cream. All right, we're going to move back over to our soup. And it's looking pretty good. That kale had just a little bit longer to cook before it was totally tender. Um, get another piece here. Okay, so to this, we're going to add some tomatoes. Just some chopped tomatoes, canned tomatoes. I think these are organic. Costco brand, 28, 28 ounce. And then we're going to add some corn. This is just frozen corn. It is organic. I try to do all organic corn non-GMO, 90, 90 some percent of the corn grown in our country is genetically modified. It means that they splice genes from other things into it to preserve it, help it make more pesticide resistant, or pest resist, resistant, I should say. And then we're gonna add in a couple cups of beans, canned beans, and these are kidney beans. I, um, I did not cook these from scratch. I usually cook my beans from scratch. Just take the hard beans, soak them in water for 24 hours, 8 to 24 hours, and then you dump that water off. The more you let them soak, the more bubbly they get on top, and then you dump off that bubbly, and that kind of helps with the discomfort you might get, the gassiness that you might get from eating beans. And by the way, that is a good thing. Um, beans, 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 the magical fruit. The more you eat, the healthier you are. Um, and those, those, um, that bubbly that comes off the beans, those are, have a probiotic effect on your gut. So beans are high in resistant starch, and that means that when you cook, when you eat beans, they resist uh, digestion in the small intestine and move into the large intestine, where it ferments to butyrate. It's a fatty acid. And that butyrate, that, those fatty acids feed your gut one of the best things for you. In fact, just some things about beans. Um, let's see, where did my beans, my beans information go? Uh, beans actually help, help move fats and other, other compounds out of the body. They help um, increase fat burning and reduce fat storage after a meal. So when you have beans, you're burning more fats. People that have a tendency to eat more beans have a slimmer waistline. They uh, decrease blood sugar, so they're great for diabetics. Let's see, I'm forgetting my lower, bread, lower blood pressure and lower blood cholesterol. I'll re uh, regulate blood sugar. For a fourth a cup of beans a day, cut risk of precancerous polyps by 65%. In fact, a large study 
that went on for like 12 years showed that people who ate beans twice a week had half the risk of colon cancer. Okay, and I'm just going to keep that on there and let that finish cooking some more. We still haven't added our water. We want to continue to let those cook without adding too much water. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add my spices. I've got two, let's see, what are our spices? We've got some chili powder, two teaspoons of chili powder, a tea, teaspoon of cumin, and some onion powder. Oh, there's my recipe right there. Oh, a tablespoon of, tablespoon of chili powder. Yes, thank you. That's what it is. I was thinking my two teaspoons of cinnamon in my pumpkin. So one tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin, and a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of onion powder. And the reason I put onion powder with onion is onion powder just boosts the flavor, gives it a little bit more flavor reduces the amount of salt that I need to add. Okay, so we are going to do our butternut squash. How many have tried to cut a raw butternut squash? How many fingers did you lose when you did that? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, I mean, you can do it. You just, if you cut off the side, and then lay it on its side and then cut it like that. That's, that's the way, it, that's an easy way to do it. But a really, really super easy way to do it is to cook this thing whole in your oven. You just, you don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to poke it. You don't have to put water in your cookie sheet, nothing. Just get a cookie sheet because it will, it will start to leak when it, when it gets cooked. I just throw it in the oven at 350, 375, cook it for an hour to an hour and a half, hour, 15 minutes. Um, and what happens is the bowl of it, like with the butternut squash, it'll cook quicker. So it'll be cooked in about an hour. And what I do is I get my knife, I reach into the oven, and I just cut that off, flip it onto a plate, and take it out because it'll get nice and soft. And I actually like it that way. I'm not using a whole lot of that part of it in this because it gets super soft. But um, I do have a little bit of it here. And then I've got this more dense part from the, from the stock or whatever it is for the main base of the butternut squash. And then I just take my knife down like that. And I hope this works. Sometimes it's, it comes off a lot easier than others. But if you, oh, one thing that I did too is when I take it out of the oven, I put it in a, you can wrap it in tin foil or I just put it in a pan with a lid and let it sweat. And then this skin just peels off super, super easy. Look at that. So much easier than trying to peel it. And then you're losing a lot of it too when you peel it like that. And of course, it doesn't all come off super, super easy, but it does come off fairly easy. I'm getting a little bit off there, but you're just preserving a lot more of that squash. And I've just recently discovered, I don't know if you guys are, eat a lot of squash, winter squashes. I love acorn squash if I can get good ones. They're a little bit hard to find, you know, really good ones that are real sweet. But I've been eating the skin on acorn, and have you ever had a curry squash? Go to Natural Grocer, it's like a little pumpkin, and get a curry squash. They're a little bit more, they're like $1.39 a pound, but they are creamy and sweet. They're like dessert, no kidding. Love them. In fact, I cook them just to have, I'll put a little cinnamon on them, that'll be my dessert. They would probably make a really good pumpkin pie. You wouldn't have to use very much sugar in it. So they're a little bit, you know, a little bit soft and, and can be a little bit messy to work with, but they're just so much easier to work with like, with like this, I think. And then I just cut, slice it like so, The seeds are in the bowl, you know, in the round part at the end, which I cut off. And I've got a little bit of that right here because I didn't know if I'd have a full four cups here. Yeah, but the seeds I, the seeds I took out. And then I just turn it like that. And what we're going to do now is just throw this in our soup. And of course, your squash is very soft. And so it's going to kind of break down in the soup. It's going to, you know, uh, fall apart, get a little 
make the soup a little bit creamy. It's not going to be nice, pretty chunks of squash. So if you wanted more of that, you could, you could um, just cook it in the soup. The problem with that is it takes much longer to cook. The soup takes longer to cook when you're using the butternut squash raw. And like, if I was making this for dinner, I'd get up in the morning while I was getting ready for work, throw this in the, throw this in the oven and just let it cook, you know, and then it's done. Or set your oven timer. A lot of times I'll set my oven timer for, you know, 4 a.m. or whatever, and by the time I get up at 5, 5.30, it's done. So it doesn't take any time at all to cook that way. And I, li I like when it breaks down like that. It just makes the soup kind of creamy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add more water to that now. Or you can leave the water out and just make this a, like a chunky, chunky vegetable bowl. Can you guys see that in the in the camera? It's so colorful and beautiful. I love, 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 love this soup. Stew. I guess it's more of a stew. I don't think I'll put that in. This this is from the top, that round part of it. I'm just gonna leave that out. I think we got plenty in here. I think we'll go with a little bit more water. Let's see, do I have an amount of water on that for the soup? Because I just, I just kind of put in how, you know, however thick or thin you want it. Pardon me? I just want to make sure the kale is tender. That's mainly. So just test your kale till it's, when it's tender. And I usually don't really add anything else except for just the kale until it's pretty soft and then I'll go ahead and add everything. And then if you want it to simmer and just get the flavors going, you know, a lot of times it'll get more flavorful the longer it sits. Um, you can do that. Let it just simmer for another half hour. Although things are going to get really soft, the butternut squash will break down more. Okay. That's looking so good. And that is all we're doing. Oh, let's see. We're going to put in some salt into our soup. And the tomatoes, the canned tomatoes have salt. And um, let's see. But that's all that has salt. So we're going to go with um, we're going to go with just probably about a teaspoon of salt, and you can do less or more or whatever. It's good good to get the sodium down in your diet if you can. All right, we're going to just turn that down and let that. Whoops. All right, we'll go over to our triple treat cabbage salad. Rinse out that lid. Cabbage is another one of those cruciferous vegetables, and raw cruciferous vegetables are particularly health promoting. That's back, back to the breast cancer. Women who are predisposed, who have that gene and are predisposed, greatly like half, reduce the risk in half when they're eating lots of cabbage and cr raw cruciferous vegetables, especially cabbage. Okay, so we're gonna make the dressing for this first. I've already got my cabbage, green cabbage, purple cabbage, and a carrot grated here in this bowl. And the, the dressing ingredients are from your pecan, one, uh, let's see, one fourth cup of pecans. And I've actually got cashews in here. I'm using cashews. One fourth cup of cashews, one third cup of water, and six small pitted dates. I've got all that soaking right here. And this is, again, just to make it so it blends up really easy and quick. The soaking, that's why I soak them. 
and we'll go ahead and add our couple tablespoons of apple or um, rice vinegar is what I'm using. And when you're buying your rice vinegar, make sure you look at the ingredient labels because a lot, most of the rice vinegars, they'll say seasoned on it, and that means it's got sugar in it, some 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 type of sugar. And I'm kind of a purist; I don't want the sugar, and so I want to go for the straight rice vinegar, just unseasoned. And then I'm adding sugar when I do the dates. I'm adding the sugar to it. So we'll go. I'm going to do a couple of tablespoons. Of course, you can add more. We don't want a too vinegary flavor, though. Yes, for the dressing, yes. Yeah, this is a sweet. Right. So you can use any kind of a date, any kind of dates. I'm using six small ones. If you're using the medjool, the medjool you find at Costco, they're bigger. They're about they're about the size of my thumb, more plump actually. And they're very soft and decadent. I love those just to eat them because they're so soft. In fact, they're, they're quite expensive, so I don't like to blend them. I just buy them as a treat. But um, you would use half. You'd only use three of those. So we'll go ahead and blend up this. And then we are going to do an apple. We're going to add an apple to our cabbage. An apple a day really does keep the doctor away. People who eat the most apples have the least, um, let's see, breast, prostate, ovarian, um, esophageal cancers. They, they, they target more so apples do. And guess where all those properties are at? In the skin. So you want to get organic apples and use the skin. In fact, apples have like, well, I can't remember the quantity, but it was like 100 million, 100 billion bacteria. And those bacteria are in the core and in the seeds. So eat the core and the seeds if you can. <laughs> I'm not going to put them in this salad, but when I'm eating a whole apple, or when I, I mean, when I'm cutting up, up an apple like this to, to eat, I'll sometimes leave that and just just eat the seeds in the core with the rest of the apple, and it's actually not too bad. I mean, if you're really intent on, on building up your gut, that's just one more thing you can do. And when you have an, a healthy gut, that you know just reduces inflammation, helps with inflammation issues, allergy issues. We're going to use our, we're going to use the chopper. It's the small blade that we're using. And we're just going to add that to our bowl. And we'll grab a spoon. Oh, we're going to add some raisins too. We've got a half a cup of raisins. This bowl is not quite big enough. Hopefully I can get everything st stirred in. And then a couple tablespoons of pumpkin seeds and a couple tablespoons of sunflower seeds. The salad is kind of a desserty salad. So good. And then we'll just pour on our dressing.
And we don't need to be afraid of nuts and seeds and their fat content. Now we want to be careful and not eat handfuls of them in front of the television. This is the way you want to add your nuts and seeds. You want to add them to your food so you're not over consuming them. The great thing about whole food fats compared to oils, which I didn't mention, is when you're eating those whole food fats, some of those fats are bound to the fibers in the food. So you're not going to absorb all the fats from that food because part of those fibers, of course, go right through you, right? And some of those fats are bound to that. So you're not getting nearly the calories, nearly the fat that you would be getting from like a tablespoon of olive oil. A tablespoon of olive oil is 120 calories and a tablespoon of nuts or seeds is about, let's see, about 30, 30 calories approximately. And with those, with those fats, you're getting micronutrients that your body loves, fibers. Dieters who eat nuts, a small amount of nuts and seeds, have more success with long-term weight loss. They help you to feel more satisfied. And they increase the absorption of other nutrients that are eaten in the same meal. So if you're having a little bit of fats with your meal, it's going to increase the absorption of the nutrients from those vegetables in that meal. I'm having a really hard time stirring that, so I'm going to um, put that in a wider bowl. It's not much bigger, but it's a little wider. Cabbage, by the way, is one of the most nutrient-dense, cost-effective vegetables. I mean, you can buy a head of purple cabbage for, you know, a couple dollars maybe, three dollars maybe, and there it is just so jam-packed with lots of nutrients. That purple color, and it's a cruciferous vegetable. In fact, one of my favorite salads that I'm doing right now is I use half cooked red cabbage and half uh, raw red cabbage. And when you cook it, when you cook, I love to add cooked vegetables to salads because it, it adds bulk and it adds, um, it just adds, it, you don't have to use as much dressing for some reason. It just kind of adds a creaminess to it, if that makes sense. A soft, soft texture. That's a nice big chunk of carrot right there. This is a really pretty salad as well. And if you stir that up really well, you know, the, the juice from the apples kind of starts to come out, which helps to coat, you know, the vegetables. I'm gonna look at that ice cream. And we're looking good there. All right. There is that salad, beautiful salad. We'll go back over to our soup and check on it. I think we were just about ready to eat, you guys. And back to the color. You've got, I mean, you've got some reds and some orange and some, um, you know, the red from the beans, the red from the tomatoes the kale, when you've got this combination of micronutrients, you're not just getting one plant food with its thousands of micronutrients, you're getting thousands more from all the other foods and they're, they're synergi synergistically working together, which is even, even better. Okay, this is ready. We're going to go ahead and put this out on, the, on our serving area. And that ice cream should be ready in just a minute. So you guys can come up and grab you a plate. And those of you who are at home, I hope next month maybe you can join us here. It would be great to have you.
And again, um, that website is healthforlifecooking.com. The four is the number four. And just send me an email and I'll send you those recipes. So until next time. <laughs> All right. Come on up. <laughs>